Hi everyone. Go ahead. My name is Utkarsh Soni, and today I'm talking about our work titled "Not All Users Are the Same: Providing Personalized Explanations for Sequential Decision Making Problems." This is a joint work by me, Sarath Sridharan, and Dr. Subhara Kamampati from Arizona State University. Uh, in addition to being accepted at XAIP, its work has also been accepted in IRAS 2021. Now in human robot interaction scenarios it is very important for the robot to behave in a way which is comprehensible to the human and even optimal actions can appear to be inexplicable to the human due to a model mismatch between them so <clears throat> um so uh, basically uh, by model mismatch what i mean is that uh, the robots model of the task can be different from what the users user thinks the model robots model of the task is and in that way uh, even optimal behavior can appear to be inexplicable and this kind of a model mismatch can be fixed if the robot provides some explanation in form of model updates to the user however every user is potentially different hence they would come up with different background knowledge and they might require different explanations for the robot's behavior imagine a doctor explaining a diagnosis to a patient versus explaining the diagnosis to a colleague in both cases the vocabulary would be different and the amount of details would be very different so in this work we aim to provide personalized explanations to the user and for that we assume that there are multiple types of users such that users from the same type would share the same model of similar model of the task so the challenges in this work that comes up is that first of all we don't know what types of what are all the types of users that exist for the task and we won't know what their model is and the second challenge is that when the target user comes to the robot for asking for explanation we would have to infer its user type online and at the same and while providing explanation we need to balance the cost of showing him or her incomprehensible behavior and uh, balancing this with the cost of communication so our approach is basically twofold there is a training stage where we opt for a data driven clustering approach a clustering strategy uh, to determine all the user types and the second stage is the interaction stage where we model the interaction between the robot and the target user as a meta pom db where the user's type the actual type is the hidden variable of the state <clears throat> so before going into that uh, i wanted to mention how we learn that user user task model or a type of user task model and for that we assume access to a set of explanatory messages a large set of explanatory messages e where each message corresponds to some information about robot's model parameter and we approximate user's model of the task by learning a labeling function that maps a tuple sas dash and a set of messages to 0 or 1 where 1 means that given this messages this set this transition would be explicable to the user and this was taken by uh, a, a work by sarat etel from hk 2018 so now we can talk about our approach on the training stage where we determine all the user types so for this we rely on training data collected from observers basically observers are type of users to whom you can interact and collect uh, data via counterfactual queries of the form where we give them a transition we give them a set of message and we ask them given this set of message would they find this transition to be explicable or not and the assumption is that the target user would have the same type as one of the observers meaning that now our problem is to actually identify user types among those observers so to solve that what we do is we represent each observer as a vector of explanatory messages so each observer is represented as a vector as a zero one vector where each bit corresponds to some explanatory message such that uh, all the messages whose bit are one are the minimal set of messages that when given to this observer would make any transition appear explicable to them so when we project all the observers in this form in this explanation space what will happen is that observers from same type would tend to be closer to each other hence that is why we perform clustering in this particular space 
now the next next question is how do we know what is the number of you uh, number of the user types and then we can do the clustering so for that we define a intra cluster dissimilarity measure called disagreement it's a domain specific measure which basically given uh, which is a problem specific measure which basically given any clustering is computed as follows we take observe it is the number of instances where we take observers who uh, are been who have been put in the same cluster but they disagree on label of some transition while they have been provided same set of explanatory messages so for that we look into the original data that was collected from the observers and hence this data data points would have the original explanatory messages and original transition now what we do is after this we apply k means clustering varying k from 1 to the number of observers and we compute uh, the disagreements value for each clustering instance and then we take the elbow point of the disagreement versus k plot as uh, the estimated number of user type because what will happen is that once you reach that point after that what will happen is that observers from the same type would start getting separated and that wouldn't decrease the disagreements value a lot so that indicates the elbow point indicates the actual number of user types so we take the clustering output for the elbow point corresponding to the elbow point so that's the clustering output being shown here and then we retrieve the original data corresponding to the observers and then we combine the data at each cluster and that is used to learn the labeling model of all the types so these were the three types that were identified and these are the learned labeling model of the type and to be more specific we actually learn a probabilistic version of this labeling model that gives us the probability of uh, a label uh, meaning whether a transition is explicable or not given a transition tau and a set of messages e dash now coming to the interaction stage we where the robots is going to actually explain the transition plan steps to the user we um the interaction actually happens in multiple steps where at each steps the robot will show the user a plan prefix and uh, will give them some explanatory messages and the user will respond as a feedback with labels for each of the transition uh, each of the transitions in the prefix so we define the total cost of this interaction as a linear combination of communication cost and inexplicability cost weighted by some uh, trade off parameter lambda and finally we model this interaction simply as a pom dp as a meta pom dp where the uh, where the user's actual type is considered to be the hidden variable of the uh, state in this case the reward uh, the pom db's reward will actually capture the cost of interaction and we use the probabilistic learned labeling model to update the belief in the target user's type as we keep on interacting with the user and keep getting labels for the transition we can uh, infer what their user type is in the pom db setup now exact pom db solvers can be intractable for longer horizons and that's why we turned into approximate approaches like the qmdp approach by liam uh, by litman et al where uh, we where if you look at the pom db and you and you have been given the user type then it simply becomes an mdp so we take these the q values for any action for these underlying mdps weight them against the belief for that particular type and that expected sum gives you the q value for any belief state coming to the qhr approach we further approximate this q star t value using a suboptimal policy where we assume that the robot will only be providing explanation for the current step and refrain from uh, providing explanations further so that allows us to calculate this in a closed form and we also looked at pom cp approach by david silver et al which allowed us some non myopic look ahead where what we did was we modified their mcta strategy to only go till depth d and then after that we uh, replace the remaining value for the simulation uh, with uh, the qmdp estimate <clears throat> now coming to evaluating our techniques for that we did computational experiments as well as human subject evaluation so we evaluated our technique 
in a disaster rescue domain where the robot's task is to rescue a survivor and put them to a shelter while there are some obstacles in the task which actually robot is equipped to uh, navigate through and there are some other tasks uh, that it has to do like refuel at the fuel station etc and there was the other domain we took was the four rooms domain which is a standard domain and we also conducted a user study to determine the usefulness of personalization so <clears throat> uh, first i'll talk about the computational experiments for that we used simulated users uh, as in the target users were simulated as an mdp and the observers by which we collect data were also uh, simulated as an mdp uh, and uh, we had a single setting for a disaster rescue domain where we handcrafted five user types Wh uh, whereas for the four rooms domain we we had three settings where we varied the number of user types from 2 3 and 4 and uh, each time the model was of each user user type was basically randomly allocated now we had a total of four setting so for each setting we collected data from simulated observers and for each user type we picked one target user and then that target user was explained three randomly generated traces by whatever techniques we were evaluating so for the results we saw that our clustering strategy was indeed able to detect on as in perfectly separate observers from the user type and it was able to perfectly uh, get all the user types uh, for all cases except for one case which which turned out to be okay because in that particular case uh, the uh, the models that were assigned to the two user types were that were clubbed together were such that they in fact did not require any explanation um because they came up with the same plan as a robot would um and then uh, we trained a decision tree classifier to learn the labeling model of, of all the detected types so their accuracy came uh, came out to be quite high and finally to evaluate the pomdp solvers we used a a baseline uh, we developed a baseline technique the baseline technique simply treats as if all users are coming from the same type so it will collect data from all observers and just use that to turn uh, uh, train one labeling model and use that for any type of use uh, for all users basically so and we also defined a regret measure that is used to check uh, that is used to check whether uh, the solver uh, so the regret measure basically takes a difference between the solvers whatever solver we are evaluating the difference between the interaction cost of the solver and uh, the interaction cost of an oracle solver which already knows the user type and has been given the correct labeling model in addition we for our experiment we varied varied the uh, the trade off parameter lambda from the total cost so uh, as you can see the regret values for the qmdp and pomcp uh, uh, algorithms for quite low compared to the baseline techniques while qhr sort of lies in the middle and this was true for uh, different values of lambda okay coming to the user study in the user study we basically did a between subject user study over zoom and uh, we had a web interface and uh, <clears throat> for the study and uh, the study was conducted using the disaster rescue uh, domain and the participants were basically assigned a user type and an explanation technique um, and the explanation technique was either personalized explanation or conformant explanation so the personalized explanations were generated by our uh, qmdp algorithm whereas the, for the conformant explanations basically what we did was we generated all explanations such that a transition would be explicable to user of, of any type so uh, so in that case basically it wasn't personalized to the particular user's type so the study begins by showing the participant giving the participant knowledge about the task uh, and the knowledge was catered exactly to their type so what their type is supposed to uh, what kind of knowledge their type is supposed to have we gave them that knowledge about the task and then we illustrated the study task that uh, that they had to perform which was basically to mark actions as expected or unexpected and at each step they'll be given more number more actions one step at a time and they might also be given some explanations by the robot 
and they were told to update their module. And after this, we took a little bit of an eligibility quiz where we asked them that, uh, where we basically checked whether or not they remembered the task knowledge because that was necessary to evaluate robots plan. And then we actually made them do the actual study task where again, at each step, they were shown some transition and they had to mark it as expected or unexpected. Finally, we asked them to give a quiz uh, where we checked whether the update, whether they remembered the updated model of the robot or not. So the explanation sort of updated their model and we checked whether that they retained that knowledge or not. And we compared conformant and personalized explanations on three dimensions, uh, the total interaction time for the task, the total number of inexplicable transitions at the end of the task and the final quiz score. And in all cases, personalized explanations did outperform conformant explanations and the difference seemed to be statistically significant. So in summary, in this work, we tackle the problem of personalizing explanation uh, in sequential decision-making problems where we, where the hypothesis is that each user can have different model of the task and hence can require very different explanations. We start by clustering uh, and identifying all the user types, and then we model the actual interaction with the target user type as in Metapom DP, where the, uh, where the user's hit type is the hidden variable of the state. Um, thank you, and uh, I can take any questions now.